Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at new features and improvements in Enscape 3.3. Welcome to this review of Enscape 3.3. We're going to take a look at some of my favorite features in this new release. I advise you to read the release notes so you can check out the rest of the features for yourself. This first update has changed the way I work with Enscape for SketchUp because you can now pin your Enscape viewport on top of your SketchUp window. Before, used to be lots of back and forth between both windows, especially if you only own one screen and the extra clicks to switch between both can be a bit frustrating. Now being able to see both windows at once feels a little more natural, resulting in a much better working experience. So on your viewport, click on window settings, preferences, and check this option to pin Enscape on top of host application. Notice that Enscape remains visible even when you're working on your model. This gives you more display options to work with. Do the typical side by side. Display at half and half. Or crop a small window at the bottom of the screen while you work on SketchUp. So what works for me is the fact that we have more display options and that for me is a huge plus. I'm hoping this can translate to the material library because when it's open, you still can't access the SketchUp application. So hopefully we'll see some sort of a solution for that. Now the main feature for this release is of course site context. This feature lets you import site information such as building, streets, sidewalk and topography straight into your Enscape viewport. This is done using OpenStreetMap data. OpenStreetMap is a, a massive geographic database with info on almost every place on Earth. So it's great that we have access to this data on Enscape. So let's take a look at how this works. To open the site context tab, you're looking for this new icon here. You can also hit O on your keyboard as a shortcut. On this tab, you want to click add site context. And that's going to open this map for you to find your location. Now this should feel very familiar if you ever use Geolocation or Google Street Map because they're very similar applications. So here you can type in your address. Imagine if you have a specific site, you can enter that address here, hit enter, and the address should pop up on the map. Now while you're on the map, the navigation controls are very simple. Use the center mouth wheel to zoom in and out. You can also use these plus and minus icons to do the same function. Click hold and drag to move around on the map. Click hold to move the pin to change its location and the address. And click the go to location to centralize your address. Next, we have this box around your location, which is the boundary box. You can stretch this in any way you see fit and everything inside is what you're going to import into Enscape. You want to be careful not to stretch this box too wide because trying to capture too much context can impact Enscape's performance. And last, you have the fit to location, which centers the boundary box around your location. If you zoom in closer to the address pin, notice that is the footprint of your SketchUp model. You can easily adjust its placement by repositioning and rotating so it fits well within the context of your location. Before you bring all of this into Enscape, there are a few filter options as to what data you want to bring in. You can select between buildings and landmark, streets and sidewalk, and the topography. So once you're ready, hit import and all of this data should be brought in on your Enscape viewport. So here is all the context that we brought in. You can see the buildings, the road and topology, and you can clearly see how the SketchUp model fits within the context of the site. Now having this information is crucial during design process, which makes it extremely easy to problem solve. So all the information that we got from OSM is organized into manageable grouped layers in the context tab. So you can turn off the entire data. 
or the buildings and streets if you wanted to. We can also do the same on the viewport and interact with each of these elements. Let's select one of the buildings to highlight its layer, which you can then also turn on and off. But this is a very simple and interactive process, which is always good to have. Now, after you import your location and its context, you can also reposition it here in the Enscape window. So go to the context menu, select edit site context so you can further adjust its placement. Now while you are in this mode, click and drag to position on the X and Z axis. Or hold control and click to move on the vertical Y axis. You also have the option to rotate the site if you need to. So these tools are meant to help place the location and its context in relation to your model. Now if your model intersects with any of the buildings on your location, you can easily fix that with one click. So if you go back to the context menu, select the hide overlapping data and you will see that all the buildings that intersect will be turned off. Now the last two options of this menu is to reset the visibility and to remove the site context. Now I like that this feature is now available. With just a few clicks, you have accurate building and topography information ready to use on your projects. Now ultimately, this grants you more time to focus on being creative. I can see how much value this brings in to a software like Enscape. Now I wish you could change the material on some of these elements for a more creative look, but maybe that's something we'll see in future updates. Now I really like this next one, we got some improvements when it comes to material application. So in this version, you can now replace an existing material with one from the Enscape library. For a quick demo, I'll select my grass material, right click and select replace with Enscape material. And here you can make a new selection from the Enscape library. Notice that when you highlight the material, you are able to see a preview on your viewport. And once you got your material, click replace to confirm your selection. Once again, a very simple yet effective improvement. Also in this update, you can now export the alpha channel with your renders. This is a render channel that makes it easy to replace sky backgrounds in Photoshop. If you check your output settings and on the option to export your render channels, you will see the options for object, material ID, depth, and now the alpha channel. If you select PNG as your render format, you will see the option to apply the alpha channel, which moves the sky background for you. This really helps in Photoshop, making it simple to make selections and replace your sky background. Next, we got some improvements to the reflections, specifically on glass and water materials. You can now see transparent materials in the reflections. If you take a look at this example and focus on the glass, you'll be able to see the reflection from other glass materials. And this is great news for those using hardware accelerator graphic cards, such as Nvidia RTX, or AMD RX 6 series, you want to go over to the general settings under rendering settings and you should have both of these options checked. Now I urge you to read the rest of the release notes for features on other platforms. For example, they have better sync movements for Revit and ARCHICAD users. If you know a channel for Enscape and ARCHICAD, leave it down in the comment section. They also have 280 new education themed assets. 30 new materials and 30 new 3D people. That's a huge plus and it's good to know that the asset library is expanding with, with each release. If you have any more specific questions, be sure to sign up for their live stream that's coming up. Check out the YouTube channel and website for more tutorials. And if you don't own Enscape yet, be sure to give it a try for 30 days and try all of these new features for yourself. So check the description for all of these links. 
This is also the first release since Enscape and Chaos joined together. So what do you think of the update so far and what other features do you want to see? Personally, I'd like to see some keyframe animation on some of these 3D assets and maybe some advanced camera controls. So let me know what are some of the features on your wish list that you would like to see. So that's going to be all for this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification for more Enscape related content. This really helps with the growth of the channel and so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. As always, I'll see you guys next time.